Hi guys. It is a dark, gloomy day here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas here on Saturday, September 22nd, 2018. Hallelujah. We have reached the first day of fall, 2018. <coughs> and goodbye and good riddance to the summer of 2018. And so maybe that has something to do with why the mainstream media has so few stories about climate change uh, in their Doomer headlines today. So this part one of today's Doomer headlines will be pretty short uh, as we look at the climate change meltdown roundup on the first day of fall 2018. Uh, then I'm going to come back in part two with, uh, good lord, how many uh, ways we're taking down the planet without any help from climate change. But before we get into that long laundry list, uh, we're actually going to start out not on the mainstream media, but on Counterpunch. I always like to check in to Counterpunch to see what's on the mind of my old buddy and fellow Doomer, Robert Hunziker. So this week, Robert is asking the, the pretty much rhetorical question at this point, is Paris 2015 already underwater? No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, the Paris Agreement of 2015 remarkably brought together all of the nations of the world except for the U.S. after Trump canceled in a concerted effort to combat the dire consequences of global warming, which, on a worst, worst, worst case basis, could lead to human extinction. Although not many climate scientists discuss that possibility. Hmm. But it really could happen. But then again, when? Yes, meanwhile, as we're all waiting to find out when climate change will send humans extinct, meanwhile, the Paris Agreement is constantly being scrutinized because it is now well understood that if the science about the timing of not exceeding one and a half degrees C or 2 degrees C is correct, then humanity does not have many shots or much time at fixing this monster before it grows totally out of control, and then human extinction will reluctantly need to be factored into the climate models for the first time ever. Nobody wants that to happen. Well, Robert, some of us do want that to happen. That, that is the one bright side uh, of climate change is the extinction of the human race. It's called karma, but of course, as go the humans, so go every one of our other fellow earthlings that we're going to take down with us on our way out. Um, there you go. Since the very beginning, the agreement was not on solid footing. For example, Dr. James Hansen, one of the world's foremost climate scientists, nailed it when immediately on the heels of the climate cord said, quote, it's a fraud, really, a fake. It's just bullshit. Thank you, James. Hanson. Uh, so anyway, what he gets into is talking, um, uh, uh, well, it, it's just breaking down. Uh, what Robert's doing is what he does all the time and what I do and anyone else with a damn brain. It, he just breaks down all the reasons that the Paris Climate Agreement is already underwater. It, it, it was underwater the, uh, the, the fucking day that the oil companies 
rubber stamped it. Let's get down to the bottom line of Robert's, uh, Robert's rant this week, then move over to the mainstream media. Okay. Uh, okay, actually, he, he has a postscript. Okay. All right, let's do the, in a, on the bottom and then the PS. In a nutshell, this is Peter Tons, lead scientist at NOAA's Global Greenhouse Gas Reference Network. Uh, quote, the rate of CO2 growth over the last decade is 100 to 200 times faster than what the Earth experienced during the transition from the last ice age. This is a real shock to the atmosphere. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, let's see, but he has a PS, a last minute PS on, uh, uh, on his article quoting Carl Edward Rasmussen, the University of Cambridge, speaking on September 14th, one week ago, quote, what does the data tell us? It shows that all is not well in the state of the atmosphere. In order to prevent further warming, the carbon dioxide levels must not grow any further. Yeah, yeah. On the growth curve, this corresponds to the curve having to settle down to zero parts per million per year. There is absolutely no hint in the data that this is happening. On the contrary, the rate of growth is itself growing, having now reached about 2.3 ppm per year, the highest growth rate ever seen in modern times. This is not just a business as usual scenario, it is worse than that. We are actually moving backwards, becoming more and more unsustainable every year. This shows unequivocally that the efforts undertaken so far to limit greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide are woefully inadequate. No shit, Sherlock. Thank you, climatologist Carl Edward Rasmussen. But anyway, you will not find that quote in the mainstream media yet anyway, but let's look at a few uh, mainstream media stories. Can we, can we listen to one more story from Hurricane, or is it Tropical Storm Florence? North Carolina River swirls with gray muck near flooded coal ash dump. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, uh, gray muck is flowing into the Cape Fear River from the site of a dam breach at a Wilmington power plant where an old coal ash dump had, had been covered over by Florence's floodwaters. Forecasters predict the water will continue to rise on Saturday, meaning today, at the L.V. Sutton Power Station. Duke Energy spokeswoman Paige Sheehan said the utility does not believe the breach poses a significant threat of increased flooding to nearby communities. That was bullshit. Yes. Wow. No environmental regulators were at the scene to help catalog the potential harm to the river with officials citing unsafe conditions. Uh, Sheehan said her company cannot rule out that ash might be escaping the flooded dump and flowing through the lake 
into the river and the ash left over when coal is burned to generate electricity contains mercury, lead, arsenic, and other toxic heavy metals. Uh, according to Duke, the plant contains about 400,000 cubic yards of ash and then there's reports now I'm hearing of a second coal ash, uh, coal ash dump. Anyway, let's, uh, the, these next two stories about the same subject I just had, to, this is the apocalypse and this techno-utopians saving the world from sea level rise. You know, this research is, uh, as I mentioned a day or two ago, that all this new research coming in, that Antarctica could go into melt overdrive. Uh, well, it's already starting as uh, the historical data is showing with just a two degree sea rise that Antarctica will be start to melt uncontrollably and sea levels could rise by 13 feet just at 2 degrees C, so do the math at a more realistic uh, estimate. But don't worry, the apocalyptimists are already on it. Here's the French do service propping up glaciers to avoid cataclysmic sea level rise. Okay. As global warming outpaces efforts to tame it, scientists have now proposed building massive underwater structures to prevent an Antarctic glacier the size of Britain from sliding into the sea and lifting the world's oceans by several meters. Yes. Uh, so here are two options. Option number one, uh, the more modest of the two engineering schemes, which is still on the scale of the Panama Canal, to shore up Thwaites Glacier would require the construction of Eiffel Tower sized columns resting on the seabed to support the glacier's ocean facing edge. Option two is a 100 meter tall underwater wall running 80 to 100 kilometers, otherwise known as 55 to 60 miles beneath the ice shelf to block bottom flowing warm water that erodes the glacier's underbelly, rendering it unstable. There we go. So uh, maybe we can get Donald Trump behind that wall. And this is uh, Mashable's spin on this same uh, bullshit story. <clears throat> if Earth's great ice sheets do start collapsing, or when Earth's great ice sheets start collapsing, massive undersea walls could hold them back. It would be best for humanity if the colossal ice sheets that blanket Antarctica stayed put. But there's growing evidence that as the planet heats up, the sprawling glaciers could begin flowing into the ocean at an accelerated pace, boosting sea levels not in feet, but in yards or meters. To halt the melting ice, some scientists have now proposed an ambitious geoengineering plan constructing massive undersea walls to keep Antarctica's ice in place. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. 
Oh, God. Okay, moving on. Here is just the latest uh, bunch of documents from the 1980s climate change documents. This is the Guardian's newest uh, update on all of this. Shell and Exxon's secret 1980s climate change warnings. Newly found documents from the 1980s show that fossil fuel companies privately predicted the global damage that would be caused by their products. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, and then they... Uh, Anyway, guys, we, we've we've been through this uh, before. I guess this is just uh, this the latest batch. Just to read one paragraph here. Okay, in the 1980s, oil companies like Exxon and Shell carried out internal assessments of the carbon dioxide released by fossil fuels and forecast the planetary consequences of these emissions. In 1982, Exxon predicted that by about the year 2060, CO2 levels would reach around 560 parts per million, double the pre-industrial level, and that this would push the planet's average temperature up by about 2 degrees C over then current levels and even more compared to pre-industrial levels. Uh, and then later that decade, in 1988, an internal report by Shell projected similar effects, but found that CO2 could double even earlier by 2030. Privately, these companies did not dispute the links between their products, global warming, and ecological calamity. Huh. On the contrary, their own research confirmed these connections. No shit, Sherlock. But, uh, other than those... Other than those uh, Antarctic undersea walls, we do have some more good news coming out of the shithole country of Mexico. All right, just to wind up this somewhat abbreviated climate change meltdown roundup, Mexico's actions stand out in the face of climate change. Yes, the actions that Mexico has implemented to deal with climate change, which have become a reference for other nations, have led that country to place itself in the global leadership, said chemical engineer Juan Carlos Arredondo. Okay, Juan Carlos. Yes. Uh, there we go. And then we're going to look at all the ways Mexico is saving the planet and becoming a poster child for the other countries on the planet. Yep, 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 yep. But anyway, guys, that seems to be about all that's on the mainstream media today. Uh, at least on Yahoo News directly about climate change uh, sending this planet into a burning lake of fire as the fall of 2018 replaces the summer. But uh, there is no shortage of headlines about the way this planet is heading directly down the toilet with no help 
from climate change, which I will get to here in part two of today's Doomer headlines coming right up. Smoke them if you got them and you know why. Bye, guys.